<sighs> right, you're up. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're like, I'm Paul Lewis. You may have met me. Oh, Paul, Irish. Um, and uh, we're talk we've been hearing a little bit about rail. We just want to spend a, a moment to just like focus on it, make sure it's all covered, yes. and just give the, give the deep dive on it. Yeah. Uh, and I want to start off by just discussing like performance and the way that we think about it. Like, oftentimes we consider it's kind of this linear relationship between like the faster it is, the better it is. And this is you know generally true. And there's a lot of academic research and a lot of like uh, you know metrics and numbers from industry that validate this and say that yes, actually conversion goes up, revenue goes up, all these things are great. But we kind of think of it as like this like straight line, right? And I'm not really sure, but like. You know, because at certain points there's certain things. You know, if you're uh, on some experience and and it's just like terribly slow, and you're like, come on, you know, you quit. Like I quit, you quit. It's just you have to, right? It gets a little bit better, and then you're like, okay, sure, yeah, I'll put up with it. <clears throat> Past that, even better, and like, yeah, I, I'm happy. This is it's beautiful. It's smooth. It's chill. <sighs> but. If we like look at it as like these like break it up into these uh, quartiles, I guess um, maybe the line is a little bit more like this. It might be a little bit more like uh, we start out and in the front actually it's just like it's literally too slow. Like from from terrible to like pretty terrible, it's just still not really satisfying the user. Up at the top, you know, very high performance like changing the page load from, I don't know, from being a second long to being like a half second long, like both are pretty much great. And it might be incredibly hard. So the ROI of development there is less important. That middle area, this is like the sweet spot, right? You know, this is like everything is good. I put in the right amount of effort. Users are happy. It's smooth. It's chill. And I do feel like a lot of times, like we kind of end up starting, you know, we start here. And we kind of want to figure out where it is that we go. Right. Um, but we need to figure out like what, what it is. And, and right now, you know, this is the, 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 the too slow thing. Yeah. Which I think, I mean, yeah, you want to get from too slow uh, to where, what do you call it? Chill. Chill? I yeah. Feel, I feel you, like it's a very useful. Chill is a good thing. It's a, it, well, yeah, well, yeah. It is for you. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but too slow itself, like, is, I don't know, like, too slow, right. I don't know. Doesn't feel good. So um, I think the question, um, why I wanted to ask this, like, is 50 milliseconds too slow? Just kind of have this question in your mind as we kind of go through this. Like, well, 50 mil, I, it, is, it is too slow. Well, well, I guess. I mean, you know what's coming up, so. I don't true. Know. It's true. Um, true. 50 milliseconds, is it too slow? Well, look at it this way, right? If you're doing some page load, like you're loading the Google store or something like that, mm. 50 milliseconds here is not a big deal, right? Because you know it's probably going to take a second or two. There's a lot of stuff going on. But let's say you are scrolling the store, right? Mm. 50 milliseconds here, you're going to feel that a lot more. You're going to much more likely to introduce jank. Be janky a little. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, let's say you're doing something with WebGL. Ooh. I know this is so pretty. Ooh. Oh yes. Form. Jamie, well done, well done, Jamie. Oh, that's good. It is weird. It's one of the nicest things I've seen. Uh, you know, another 50 milliseconds here, you're going to feel that one too, right? What it really comes down to is that the user context matters. What the user's doing is actually the thing that's going to define whether it feels too slow or whether it feels chill. Hmm. Mm. I like it. Yeah, good. All right. And I think that's kind of the way we've been thinking about this. Like, performance. Uh, has had a lot of ambiguity, and we felt it on the Chrome team. We, we've optimized, you know, for things like uh, benchmarks and Kraken and Dromeo and, and Octane, and that's cool and all, but like, we're not really satisfied with that. And we were thinking about a better way of modeling this, and kind of walked back to Google's principles. And the number one principle is like focus on the user, and all else will follow. And we're like, that makes sense. Seems like a good thing. A great thing. Like, let's apply this to performance. And so, like, we thought it might actually, we could flip the question kind of on its head, right? Right. So instead of being kind of going, what's slow, or is 50 milliseconds slow, or any of that kind of stuff, instead of that, why don't we say, what does the user feel? Mm. Or as I like to put it, mm. how can we make performance user focused? And I think if we're talking about users, we're talking about human beings, and we have to start with human perception. And I think a lot of people, um, many of us have seen these numbers before. Um, they're about how delays are perceived. So up to 100 milliseconds, it just feels instant. 
um, 100 to 300. There's a, there's a perceptible delay, but it's not too bad. Up to a second, you're still kind of task focused, but it's very perceptible now. And then again, it goes all the way up to 10 seconds where you just get, I give up. I give up. I'm not going to bother with this. I'm just going to go and do something else. And I guess there's probably one more number that we should kind of toss in the mix. 60 FPS, right. um, or kind of the flip side is the 16 milliseconds per frame in order to achieve 60. It's just kind of like the, the jank thing that, right. that's been discussed. So we'll add that into kind of the number mix right okay. there. So on the one hand, there's like this kind of theory, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, you've actually got the reality of looking at a site and what goes into it. So for example, let's say here, um, I'm going to the Chrome Dev Summit website, and I tap on it, and I'm in the search, so I, I tap on the site stuff, and that's a load. And we're loading the site, and I maybe I scroll a bit. That's an animation. Fair enough. I'm going to tap on the Ooh, menu. It's like, so nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Lo loads me the data there. I, like I do a bit of a fling that's thing. Nice. Yeah. And then um, we go into a section with Joffrey, and then. Um, and then Owen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You call him Owen, whatever. Um, so you start to sort of see these atomic actions as you're going through. As you're thinking about the things that you're building, you kind of go, yeah, that, that feels like these are the discrete, discrete interactions that are actually happening. So what we then need to do is tie those two things back together. We know how humans perceive uh, delays and, and emotion and so forth, and we know that we can break down our experiences into these um, kind of buckets, I suppose. Yeah. So the four that we have are response, animation, idle and load, and conveniently, by the power vested in us by transitions. <laughs> so good, so good, feels great. Okay. I was, I, 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 I really wanted like the, <clears throat> like the, like the, you, you it wanted settles the kind of, down and like you wanted the, the cheesy the dust, drop. yeah. I know, I couldn't bring myself to do oh, it. I do, although I do love the flame one. <laughs> yeah, like the classic Kino flame. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so good. Anyway, <sighs> so, sorry. Rail. Let's dive into those responses. Um, this is kind of the, uh, you tap on something and we bring something back on screen. Um, from the perception, we know that it's something that feels instantaneous, 100 milliseconds is going to make it feel instantaneous. So then maybe that tapping on a button or tapping on a form control, something in that kind of area. We want that to feel instant to our users. Next up, animation. Well, we want these to feel smooth and consistent. So this is you know, animations like scrolling or transitions or gestures or those kind of things. Um, humans are very good at noticing variation in frame rate, not necessarily what the frame rate is, but because the frame rate on the web is 60 frames a second, that's what we aim for. And we want consistency there more than anything. Yeah. Idle's next. Uh, idle is you know, interesting. It's kind of like the absence uh, of an interaction. Um, the user's not doing anything right now, but the thing is, is they might be. Um, uh, and the key thing here is, this is a great time to do work, but the user might start interacting at any time, so you need to be available and responsive to that, so that when they start to interact, you are giving a snappy response right back. And so if you break up your work into 50, 50 millisecond chunks, you can basically guarantee that between you and the browser, you're gonna do a good job of responding to that user when they start to engage. Um, the last one is load. Uh, load, I think, is the one that we're all kind of most familiar with. We've talked about it for years. Um, and load, uh, firstly, like getting the experience to the user, delivering to them in about a second, to keep that like seamless flow of thought really nice um, is kind of what we're shooting for here. Yes. So um, that's kind of like the numbers, but we're developers and we need to kind of like make this both measurable and like quantitative things that we can discuss on our teams um, and just make it really action focused. So if we take that stuff and bring it blended in, we're going to kind of just walk through the, the specific items. Right. So as you out. said, it's like the responses is buttons, it's uh, form controls, it's anything where you're kind of changing state, I suppose, yeah. uh, is the opportunity to give the user some feedback. You want that to feel instant, 100 milliseconds. You could call this, uh, it's, it's input latency too. It's yeah, exactly right. Generally, it's just dang, dang, response. Have you ever had that thing where you tap on something and you're like, did that work? And you go for it a second time. And just as you tap it the second time, the first one kicks in, and you're like, oh, just mm. So you then tap it like a third time, and you go, I'm going to wait this time. And then you kind of get, uh, it just drives me mad. That's, terrible. that's what this is talking about very much. Uh, animation is the next one. As I said, scrollings, transitions, uh, gestures, you know, like pinch zoom, all those kind of things. You want those to be stick to finger fast, uh, so 16 milliseconds. And idle, great time to schedule work. Chunk it into 50 milliseconds. That's the right way to do it. And lastly, load. Um, 
deliver it in one second. Uh, but in addition to that, and, and probably the trickier part, is continuing to, to satisfy these response goals and stay responsive to the user during that load. You know, during a page load, a lot of things happening. JavaScript running all over. It's just like a circus and cacophony of things happening on a single thread. And it's a little tricky to actually continue to satisfy like responding to the user when they start to engage. And they want to engage. Like, they do. They're just, There's hey, it's a thing. Woo -hoo. Off we go. Yeah. Okay. The, it's good for us to see kind of goals and, and so on. But the important thing that um, we want to reiterate about Rail at this point is essentially that it puts the user right back in the center of the performance story. The technology and the technical decisions, they will come as, as part and parcel of that. But putting the user in the center is exactly right, because that's exactly where we think they should be. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>